Hello, it's Michaela, and today I want to go over some effective reading strategies to read more efficiently, more quickly, and just overall um, get it done better. There's some obvious tips here like have good lighting, be comfortable, um, you know, plan out your readings, and don't have distractions, but I want to go more in depth than that into tips that are actually going to be useful when you're doing essays, homework, or test. And that's actually the three parts that will be to this video. Um, first homework, then tests, and then essays. So I'm splitting it up into three parts because it's kind of different reading tips for each sort of reading, I guess. So here we go. So let's say you have a reading assignment for your class and you just have like a ton, a ton of pages of readings to do and you don't know how to go about doing it. First, I would say skim anything that you either already know or that's repetitive. So if the author is giving examples and you understood the first example, then you can skim the following examples because those are, those are just there to provide you more understanding so you don't need to read extra. Also read each paragraph but pay the most attention to the first and last sentences because those tend to be the ones that are respectively what introduce the topic at hand and what summarize the topic at hand. Also if you can find online like summaries of the reading like spark notes, never use the spark notes just to skip the reading. Um, but what is a good idea is to re do the reading and then afterwards go on to the online summary and make sure that you understood everything. So don't use it as a substitute or a replacement, but rather use it to affirm what you learned. If you're doing a textbook reading, then definitely pay attention to the headers, but that's kind of common sense, I think. Also write down things that you can bring up in class if you have like collaborative discussion style classes. So while you're doing the reading, you're simultaneously preparing for your class. That being said, make sure you read the entire page before you take those notes because sometimes I'll find that I'll take notes on like a small section because I think it's important and I'll realize a moment later it wasn't important at all and it was just a waste of my time. So read the section, then the take the notes. If you find yourself repeatedly reading a paragraph and um, you're just not absorbing it, just stop reading because you're only wasting your time and um, you, you need to just take a break at that point. Uh, don't try to persist with that reading if it's just not working for you. Break up your readings, especially like I find the ones where it's at least 50 pages of reading. It's hard to do in one sitting. So break it up. Just make sure that you're not breaking it up in the middle of a chapter because then it's confusing and harder to remember what belonged in what chapter. Also, if you have these huge readings, don't be afraid to change up your reading pace. So read quickly during things that are obviously less important or um, not as relevant to your class and slow down and take your time with the things that you know are going to come up in class. Especially if you're skimming, always write down the page number for your notes because that way you can kind of skim the reading a little bit more. Um, I'm not saying like you shouldn't absorb the reading because you should, but then when you're in class and you're flipping through your book, if you have the page numbers ready in your notes, you can quickly go back to that page and like scan it while you're talking about it in class. So that way it's less pressure on you when you're actually doing the reading assignment because you know that you'll be able to easily refer to it later during class. Um, it just makes things easier later on. Another one is just to review before class, review your reading and the main ideas. And then finally, unlike essay writing, which I am going to talk about shortly, start with your hardest readings first and get those out of the way. It'll help you to avoid procrastination as well. Okay, the next category is tests. There are often excerpts of readings in tests that you have to answer questions on, especially the SATs. So this is relevant for that. But first of all, a lot of people say, read all the questions, then do the reading. I disagree with that. I would say read the first two questions, but we only read the very first question like in depth. Make sure you understand what it's asking for so that when you go through the reading, you're going to know what you should be looking for. Scan the second question because it's often in chronological order. So you know what if you reached kind of the idea of the second question in the reading, then you know you've missed the answer to the first because usually it's in that chronological order. So actually that's just another tip um, in general is because questions are generally going to be in order of this of the reading, that means you should be taking it one portion at a time. So answer the first question and stop reading once you've gotten through that. Then read the next question and then do that part of the reading and then read the next question. So do it in those chunks. Um, I think it's easier to do them all together because if you try to read all the questions at once, it's just going to confuse you. You're not gonna remember all of those questions. Um, it's just too much to take in, I think. This is my personal opinion. If it works for you to read all the questions first, please do that. This is just um, how I prefer to go about doing it. Especially if it's a time test, don't focus on the details. You're going to get bogged down. Focus on the main idea because usually that's going to be what's most important for questions. And then when you need to access the details for specific questions, you can go back and read those. But don't bother trying to read really slowly the entire time to absorb all of that. Also, skip the main idea questions until the very end. Those are good once you've answered all the questions and you really have a good understanding of the complete text or excerpt that you read. 
Um, so answer all the specifics first and then save main idea questions until you have a better understanding. If you're doing multiple choice, like on the SATs, I would advise coming up with intuitive answers before you read the options. This is because reading questions are often subjective. Like what does the author believe or how is this portrayed? It's not specific mathematical equations um, in a reading. So I think it's a good idea to kind of come up with an intuitive answer once you read the question and then read your options because if you see an option that kind of matches your intuitive idea, that's more likely to be the answer. But if you just read the options before coming up with an answer, it might confuse you more. Once you do read a question, go back to the reading and use brackets or a highlighter um, for which sentences are going to pertain to your answer so you're not rereading stuff that's not relevant. It'll just help you um, make it more concise. If you don't know the answer to a reading question, use just the main idea of the text to try to answer it. This is because I think looking at a reading from a bigger picture perspective is often more comprehensible than trying to zero in on all of the specific um, details. Okay, and then finally, we often have to do readings for essays, like if you have to kind of compile evidence from several different texts or online articles to put into an essay, this is, um, these tips are going to hopefully help with that. The very first one is to do a word search if you're online. So for example, on my Mac, it's going to be control F, and then I can search for a word, it's going to pull all of those words from the article, and then all of the sentences that have your evidence. Um, so that's really helpful when you're trying to get through all these readings for one essay. Also, as you're going through them, write down questions that you have because you could use those to develop your essay. So while you're doing the reading, if you are kind of writing down your own questions, those are really great to put in because then you're not just summarizing the text, but you're also incorporating like deeper thinking into your final essay. Use the index in the back of the book. Um, this is if you are not on a laptop and you don't have the control F um, tool. Take the time to look up words you don't know. Ideally, you want to do this for any reading, but if you're pressed for time with homework or um, tests, that's not always so feasible, but if you're going to be writing an essay, make sure that you're always looking up the definitions of words that you don't know just because you don't want to use a word incorrectly in your essay if you're assuming it means one thing. Then finally, usually I would say, um, especially with homework, start with the hardest reading so that you don't procrastinate, but when it comes to essays and you're trying to get through material that you need for evidence, start with the most comprehensible reading. And this is because the better idea you have of what you're going to be writing about, the easier it'll be for you to tackle um, the same idea but harder texts of it. So that way when you go and do the harder readings you just have a more um, general idea of what it is that you're actually reading about since it's all going to be on the same topic. So um, I think that that could potentially be useful. That is it. So I really hope that this helps you with speed reading or reading effectively, reading efficiently, whatever it is that you're doing in your tests, homework, essays. Um, but thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week.